Continuing on with our you know, general overview of Discord bot features, we are doing buttons and select menus in today's video. Now we're doing both of them in the same video as the implementation is very similar and I don't really think there's a point in separating them out between multiple videos. This is probably going to be a longer video than normal, maybe about 20 minutes or so. But uh, we're doing both because it's basically the same, more or less. Um, I have some boilerplate code here. Some of it is inspired by other videos in the series. I would recommend checking out the cards if you haven't seen any of those. We're using listen events today rather than light bulb. Uh, I kind of came to the realization it's probably better that I leave command handlers out of it where possible just in case they kind of break or go wrong. So I've just done this kind of on message crate here. You can copy this out yourself. It basically just, you know, if someone sends a message in a guild, it checks to make sure that the uh, the author uh, is a bot or if there's no content then it returns. Otherwise, you know, if we can activate using buttons and select as, as we like. We're just leaving these blank for now because... Of course, the implementations of the commands is something I, that I need to show you. Before we get into the video properly, if you found it helpful at any point, then consider liking to let me know, and maybe subscribing if you want to see more. If there's anything in particular that you want me to cover in the future, whether it be Discord bots or not, then do leave it in the comments and I'll see what I can do. This video is also sponsored by Sobrancy, much like the last one. Uh, they're running a giveaway at the moment for free hosting. That closes in about, I think, 12 days or so. So if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll have more information about that. Thanks to Sobrancy for subscribing, and if you want more information about that, there will be a video in the cards. To actually start creating buttons and select menus, we need a library called Hikari Miru. So we can go into our terminal and do pip install Hikari Miru like that. Uh, as you can see, I already have it all installed and everything, but this provides kind of an interface to create button menus and select menus, similar to discord.py's views. Um, system. For those of you that watch my streams, you may remember in those we actually used one called Hikari Neon. However, that project doesn't exist anymore, it's not being maintained, um, and so Hikari Miru now is the only real option that we have. Uh, so we need to import it using import Miru, and then we also need to load it using miru.load bot. So this just loads the bot into the library just to make sure that everything works properly. And after that, we can start creating our button and select menu interfaces. Uh, so Miru uses something called views. And they're inspired by discord.py's views uh, in a sense, and they work relatively the same way. So we could do class uh, dice view. So if you were just doing a buttons one for now, uh, you, can do, you can inherit miru.view. And then Miru uses decorators um, to create buttons and then the uh, the methods that they decorate are the logic that runs when you click those buttons So we can do miru dot button uh, a label equals 1 d6 and you can have an emoji uh, Which is just gonna leave blank for now while I explain something else so you can see on the on on this bit here If I can there we go if I can get power toys to work there we go on this bit here We can see that label and emoji are both um, optional However, at least one of them needs to be passed through. So you could have a label without an emoji, you could have an emoji without a label. You have to have at least one. If you want an empty button, you can pass a blank, um, a zero width character into it and it'll work just fine. So with the emoji itself, uh, for those of you that don't know, what we can do to get emojis is we can type the name of the emoji as normal and then we can go to the start and then we can click, uh, or well, then we can press backslash, I don't know why I said click, press backslash then render it. Now these numbers work a little bit differently to other emojis. However, you just uh, copy paste the emoji into here and boom, it's in. Uh, you can also, I believe you can use custom emojis as well. It just needs to be an emoji object for that. I'm not going to go over that in this video because that's outside of the scope. And then a button needs a style. So you don't have to pass the style if you don't want to, a default to the primary style. However, there are a few options that you have. Uh, so we can do hikari.buttonstyle.primary. Uh, there is also, if I can bring that back up, danger, link, secondary, and success. The main differences here are really the colors. There's nothing really else um, or different about them. For some reason, link and secondary are both gray. I don't know why that is. I'm pretty sure they are just literally the same color. So I have no idea why. Uh, Discord has that as a thing, but it does. So we can just set that to primary, or you cannot pass out all and it would be set to primary automatically. And then we can define our button, our 1D6 button. And then we can do self button 
uh, miru dot button, and then ctx as miru dot context. So this provides, you know, obviously the context of an action. Um, you should be familiar with context by now. And then the button is the actual button object. Most of the time, you probably won't need this. I've never really found a use case where you would need that, but I imagine considering it is being passed through that there is at least one. I guess if you want to get some information about the button or something like the label. Uh, so what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to import random because we're building a dice roller. Uh, I always like dice rollers as examples. I think they're quite good for that, this sort of thing. And then we're going to have a roll, which is oops, a oopsie daisies, <laughs> a random dot rand int. And then we're going to set that between one and six. And then we're going to have ctx or wait ctx dot edit response. Uh, you rolled a, and then uh, going to have the roll, and then we're going to separate that. Oh, not separate it. We're going to wrap it with asterisks to make it bold, because why not? And that's all it will do. So it will just roll a dice for us. There still isn't a space here. <laughs> um, and then it will tell us what you rolled. You could use ctx.respond here. However, if you do that, it will actually send a new message. If you don't necessarily want to do that, I've never you know, come across a use case where that would in any way be preferable. So we can use edit response and it will just you know, edit the message for us uh, with this uh, content. So just to kind of show off, I'm going to have another button and we're going to make it a d20 because you can't play D&D without a d20. And we're going to have this as a success button because why not? And then I don't think there is an emoji for 20, so we're just going to get rid of the emoji <laughs> and just set this to 20. And also make sure to change the method names as well if you do copy-paste. I imagine you'll probably be copy-pasting quite a lot um, due to just the nature of, of the way you know button choices work. So just make sure you change the method name, otherwise it won't work. It's not like commands that still will. Uh, so do keep that in mind. And then we also need to find a way to stop the menu. So we can copy paste this again. Uh, we can just have, you know, we'll just have an, an emoji only to show it off. And our emoji will be, let's see what we got. I think we've got the cro that green cross, haven't we? Yeah. So I wouldn't uh, use a red cross, but seeing as the button will be red because we're going to set it to danger. Danger? Uh, it, it is literally the exact same shade of red. Uh, I found that out while I was experimenting with this the other day. Uh, or at least planning what I was going to do. So in this case, we need await uh, ctx.edit response once again. And we could do you close the, well, we could do the menu was closed. Uh, the menu was closed. And then to actually get rid of all the components, you could just set components to be an empty list. And that will get rid of all the buttons so they can't be clicked again. And then we could do self.stop to stop the menu from waiting on our next input. Uh, you could do, you know, ctx. I'm not sure if ctx. Delete is a thing, but you can do ctx. Message. Delete, uh, and it will, you know, delete the message if you don't want it there anymore. I just like to have, you know, the indicator that the menu was open at some point and is and now isn't, um, unless you're in an, uh, an ephemeral, I suppose, in which case it wouldn't matter. But that's besides the point. So now we actually need to load our menu. So we can do that down here, and you can do this in a command as well. The, the, the steps are more or less the same thing. And down here, we have uh, view equals dice view timeout equals 60. Uh, so this timeout, it defaults to 120. Uh, however, 60 I, f I feel like is a little bit better. Um, and we can do message equals await uh, event.message dot respond and this is the bit that will differ if you're using light bulb for example it would be ctx dot respond i'm pretty sure uh, and it would be roll your dice and then the components uh will be view dot build uh, so we literally just you know build the view we create all the buttons it returns a list of components for the uh for discord to handle and then we can do view.start message. Uh, if you're using light bulb, uh, this returns a response proxy, so you need to do message.message. .message. Uh, it's a little weird, but for us, we don't need to do that. And then we can do await view.wait. And then for, for purposes that I'll talk about later, we'll just print all done there. So we can now run the bot. So we can do pi-m test bot. And we can go back in our server 
And now if we type buttons, we can now roll the dice. There's only one button there. Why is that? Oh, because I didn't check. I told you. I told you. If you don't change the meta names, it won't update. God damn it. <laughs> I knew I'd do it. Uh, buttons. There we go. So we now have three. So we have uh, a button with an emoji and a label. A button with just a label and a button with an emoji. So if we click this, we roll a two. If we click this, we roll a nine. If we click this, the menu was closed. And this all done gets printed down here. So in the actual logic itself, uh, this view.way is quote unquote blocking. It blocks the kind of the execution path. I'm not really sure what you call it in um, async IO. It doesn't block the bot, obviously, but it just kind of sits there and waits. And then anything on this same logic chain uh, will run after you stop uh, the view. So in our case, just print all done. Uh, I like to do all my cleanup kind of within the view personally. So, um, you know, that's why I just did a print there. So select menus are a little bit different. You know, what we can actually do, we can just do one in here. Uh, I was originally going to create a separate view uh, for this, but I don't think there's much of a point because you can combine uh, buttons and select menus in the same view. I do believe the order matters, so maybe it'd be better to have this kind of up here. Uh, and then we can do Miru dot select. And we have a placeholder, you know, we'll, we'll actually want to do this and we'll see why in a second. Placeholder, so this is the original value of what you see on the select menu. So in this case, we're just going to do choose a color. This is going to be a color selection thing. It's not going to be related to the dice at all. And then we have options equals, and then it's a list of miru.select options. Uh, so in our case, our label is red. Uh, I don't know why I've done that in quotes. Label equals red. And then we can just copy paste that. Green and blue. As we all know, these are the only three colors in existence. Every other color is just a combination of those. And then once we've done that, we can do async def uh, select menu colors. I'm still yet to think of a good three letter acronym for select menu. So if anyone has a better one, then please do let me know. Uh, I just don't like huge prefixes on on things because it's just ugly so yeah um but of course you can call it whatever you want it's fine and then we have our select menu in our context as we do before and then that returns none and then await ctx.respond uh you can do select value zero uh, is the color you chose uh, and this select value zero is just, you know, the actual value, well, that you selected pretty much. It's, uh, I believe it is just the label. I think you can set a separate value, can you? You can. Uh, so if you don't set a value, the value is set to the label. However, if you do set a separate value, it would be that. Um, and that's pretty much it for select menus. So we can just do that again. And now our select, well, we'll just have buttons. Okay, there we go. So we can choose a color, green. Uh, green is the color of your choice. Did I do CTX respond? I did. Okay, so yeah, so that's what respond does. Uh, you know, it just responds. And then we still have our button functionality as well. And all that jazz. So yeah, that is a, you know, a brief overview of buttons and select menus. I was going to do it in two separate menus, hence all this down here. We can probably just get rid of that now. But I changed my mind because I felt it was just easier to keep them in the same menu. There are some things, uh, there are some extra things that I do want to cover before I go. So the first one is menu timeouts and the second one is checks, basically. So if you come down here, we can do async def on timeout self and then that returns none. That doesn't take anything else. And then we can pretty much just copy this logic here. And then all we need to do is change this to self.message.edit because this is the actual message object now. So not edit response, we just want edit. Uh, and then we can just say, you know, the menu timed out, components equals nothing, self.stop, easy enough. And then we can do dot view check. So this is a method that runs whenever someone tries to interact with the menu. So you can check to make sure, well, what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure that the, the user is, is of a specific ID. Uh, but you can do kind of really anything you want in here. So we have, uh, we do actually have the context in here. And then we're going to do return ctx.user.id double equals and I'm quickly going to grab my ID uh, like date. 
and put that in there. And now it will check to make sure it's me clicking the button. So uh, we're going to set the timeout to five and then we're going to show the timeout off first. Uh, so we just do buttons again and just wait for five seconds and it should time out. There we go, so the menu timed out. For some reason we get an error. I don't know what that's all about, though it doesn't appear to actually affect the running of the menu. I, I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm not sure, like if you leave them, if if you leave the buttons up, I don't know if it'll, uh, if it'll actually no, it does stop because it does print all done. So yeah, it seems to work fine. It just errors. I don't know why. That's, it might just be a bug or I'm, I might be doing something slightly wrong. I'm not sure. Uh, if anyone does know what's going on then, do let me know. But if we just change this back to 60 and then run this again, do buttons, and as you can see, I can click everything perfectly fine. However, if I change my ID to the one above, we'll see if I do buttons again, even though I can invoke it, so it would be your responsibility to prevent who can invoke it, I can't actually click any of the interactions. See that interaction failed. This interaction is now going to fail. So that is how you can control who can actually interact with your menus. The other way, of course, is just to have an ephemeral uh, if something's particularly sensitive, which might be the better way to do it. Although if you're doing prefix commands, that's obviously not possible. So it sort of depends on exactly how you want to do, but that functionality is there if you need it. One other thing that I literally realized just then, I completely forgot to show you, was that you can actually put buttons on separate rows if you want. So this button stop here, we want to put on the second row, say, we can do row equals two. So the top row is row one, and then you get row two, row three, row four. Um, if you don't specify a row, the buttons will keep going along. Actually, we, we want to put this on row three, actually, don't we? Um, so you can have five buttons on a row, and you can have up to five rows of any interaction type, I believe. So if you had a select menu in there, then you would be limited to four rows of buttons. I think that's how it works. But we can actually control uh, what row things go on. So if you wanted the stop button to be on a different row than the rest of the buttons, we can pass that into row three. And if we do buttons here, you see it's on a different row entirely. So if you had some navigation and you wanted some other stuff, uh, then you can control precisely where everything went, uh, which is pretty nice. Oh yeah, I forgot I can't interact with it because I set myself to not be able to. <laughs> so that just about does everything for buttons and select menus. I know it was a slightly longer video and it might be a little bit more complicated, but there was a lot to go through and there was no point in splitting them up, as I said at the start of the video. If you do have any questions about anything you saw, then do feel free to leave them in the comments. I don't buy it, you know, I'm here to help you. Um, so well, yeah. About the giveaway thing that I was talking about before, uh, so Brant C, this video is sponsor is hosting one that allows 100 of you to win three months of Discord bot hosting on them. And even if you don't win the giveaway, they're also running a promotion where you can get one month free. For more information about that, you can look at the video. It'll be the cards at the start of the video, because I think I mentioned it then. Or maybe it'll be in the cards now, who knows? Uh, but either way, you know, it's it's really cool offer they're doing. Um, and honestly, I think that the hosting solution they've got is actually pretty decent. So I would recommend checking it out if you're even slightly interested about that. I've already talked about liking and subscribing if you want to, but if you really enjoy the content, you can actually support me a little bit more by hitting the join button or by joining the Patreon. Use the link in the description. If you do either of those two things, one pound a month, you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you on Monday for the next edition of Perfect Python. I don't know what episode that will be, but it will be good, probably, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so I'll see you for that.